Eukaryotic cells. These contain membrane-bound organelles. So if we look at the overview of the cells topic, we are looking at the structure of eukaryotic cells. So here's just the specification reference. So the structure of eukaryotic cells restricted to the structure and function of cell surface membrane, nucleus, mitochondria, chloroplasts, Golgi apparatus and Golgi vesicles, lysosomes, ribosomes, rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, cell wall, cell vacuole. In complex multicellular organisms, eukaryotic cells become specialised for specific functions. Specialised cells are organised into tissues, tissues into organs and organs into systems. And you should be able to apply your knowledge of these features in explaining adaptations of eukaryotic cells. So just a recap from GCSE of what eukaryotes and prokaryotes are. So all living organisms are made of cells which have the same basic features in common. And it suggests that all living things have evolved from the same common ancestor. And there are two main types of organism. There are eukaryotes and prokaryotes. And both types contain organelles. Eukaryotic cells are complex, whereas prokaryotic cells are smaller and simple. Animal, plant, algal and fungal cells are eukaryotic cells. So if we look at an animal cell, first of all, animal cells have a cell surface membrane. They've got a cytoplasm, which is where the chemical reactions occur. We've got the nucleus. And then at the very centre of the nucleus is a nucleolus. Golgi apparatus. Mitochondria rough endoplasmic reticulum, which have ribosomes on, lysosomes, nuclear envelope, ribosomes, and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now, plant cells, they have the same organelles, but they also have a few added extras. So they also have a cellulose cell wall with plasma desmata in, they have a vacuole, which is also known as a tonoplast, which is a fluid filled compartment, usually filled with cell sap. And they also have chloroplast, which is a site of photosynthesis. So algal cells also carry out photosynthesis like plants, but unlike plants, they can be either unicellular, so exist on their own, or they could be multicellular. And algal cells are a lot like plant cells. They have all the same organelles, including a cellulose cell wall and chloroplasts. However, the chloroplasts in many algal cells are different shape and size to plant chloroplasts. Fungal cells. So fungal can also be multicellular or unicellular. Fungal cells are also a lot like plant cells, but with two main differences. So cell walls are made of chitin not cellulose, and they don't have chloroplasts. So now if we look at an example of a type of cell, um, specific for, adapted for a specific function, so epithelial cells from the small intestine, their function is to absorb small molecules like amino acids from the lumen of the small intestine into microvilli and villi to be carried away by the blood. So the first specialization they have is microvilli, which increase the surface area of the cell. And they increase the rate of diffusion of molecules into the cell. The second specialization they have is they contain many mitochondria, which generate energy in respiration required for active uptake of molecules across the cell membrane. So now if you look in specific at specific organelles. Organelles are small parts of the cell which are often membrane bound and each organelle has its own particular function. So first of all the plasma membrane. So this includes the cell surface membrane which is a bilayer of phospholipids and proteins 
and it controls the entry and exit of molecules into the cell or out of the cell. And it's involved in cell recognition because they have receptors on them. Next one is the nucleus. So the nucleus is surrounded by a double membrane and it's got these pores in the membrane. The nucleus contains chromatin, which is DNA and proteins. And then you've got the nucleolus, which is a dense area which makes RNA. OK, then you've also got mitochondria. And the outer membrane controls the entry and exit into the mitochondria. The inner membrane forms many folds called cristae, which provide a large surface area for the attachment of respiration enzymes. And then it's got a fluid centre, which is called the matrix. And it's the site of aerobic respiration is the mitochondria. Okay, looking at something that's just in plants, so chloroplasts are small and flattened. They are found in plant and algal cells. They are surrounded by a double membrane. And it also has thylakoid membranes inside. And these membranes are stacked up to form grana. And grana are linked together by lamellae or intergranal lamellae which are thin, flat pieces of the thylakoid membrane. And the function of the chloroplast is for photosynthesis. Some parts of photosynthesis happen in the grana and some happen in the stroma. OK, now the endoplasmic reticulum is a complex system of double membranes associated with the nuclear and cell surface membranes to allow transport through the cell. The rough endoplasmic reticulum, or RER, its surface is covered with ribosomes, whereas the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, or SER, is the site of lipid synthesis. You've got these uh, flattened stacks, which are known as the Golgi body, or Golgi apparatus, and they are a stack of flattened stacks, or cisternae, formed from smooth endoplasmic reticulum or SER. They have vesicles which contain secretions which pinch off from the Golgi. Functions include assembling glycoproteins, transporting and storing lipids, forming lysosomes, producing digestive enzymes and secreting carbohydrates. They assemble and secrete substances. Yep, so as we said, the Golgi vesicle is a small fluid filled sac in the cytoplasm surrounded by a membrane and produced by the Golgi apparatus. And its function is to store lipids and proteins made by the Golgi apparatus and transports them out of the cell. OK, now lysosomes. These are membrane bound vacuoles formed from the Golgi body and they contain hydrolytic or digestive enzymes. They destroy worn out organelles. They digest material taken into the cell, like bacteria in white blood cells. They are released to digest other cells and can cause cell to digest itself. Ribosomes. These are small dense organelles and they can either be free in the cytoplasm or they can be attached to the endoplasmic reticulum to form the rough endoplasmic reticulum. They are the site of protein synthesis and in the eukaryotes the ribosomes are known as ATS whereas in prokaryotes they're slightly smaller and they're known as 70S ribosomes. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum. They are similar to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, but they have no ribosomes. Uh, they synthesize and process lipids. Rough endoplasmic reticulum, or RER. 
is a system of membranes enclosing a fluid filled space and the surface is covered with ribosomes. There are folds uh, that what it does is it processes proteins that have been made at the ribosomes. Microvilli, these are finger like projections of epithelial cells and what they do is they increase the surface area for absorption. Got the cell wall, which is found in plants and algae. So it's a rigid structure that surrounds the cells in plants, of uh, plants, algae or fungi. In plants and algae, it's made usually of cellulose, but in fun fungi, it's made of something called chitin. Supports the cell and prevents them from changing shape. Okay, then we've got the cell vacuole, which is found in plants, which is also known as the tonoplast, which is a membrane-bound organelle found in the cytoplasm. It contains cell sap, which is a solution of sugar and salts, and the surrounding membrane is called the tonoplast. It helps to maintain pressure inside the cell and keep the cell rigid, and it stops the plant wilting, and it's involved in the separation of unwanted chemicals in the cell. Okay, now if we look at relating cell ultrastructure to function, as each organelle has its own function, you can then look at what there is more of or less of and then deduce what the function of the cell is. And it's possible to deduce the role of a cell by looking at the size and number of organelles inside. For example, as mitochondria produce ATP, which is an energy store that cells with many mitochondria have, which have a high rate of metabolism, like the heart muscle cells, they will have many mitochondria so they can release ATP for the, to release energy. Okay, now if you look at epithelial cells, they're in the small intestine. They are adapted to absorb food. And the walls of the small intestine have lots of finger-like projections called villi and microvilli. And these increase the surface area for absorption. The epithelial cells on the surface of the villi have folds in their cell membrane called microvilli, and microvilli increase the surface area. They also have lots of mitochondria to provide energy for the transport of digested food molecules into the cell. Red blood cells are adapted to carrying oxygen around the body. They have no nucleus to make more space for the oxygen carrying compound called hemoglobin. Another type of um, cell which is adapted to its function is sperm cells. These contain lots of mitochondria to provide the large amounts of energy they need to propel themselves towards the egg. Okay, so now we need to just look at the cell organization. So in multicellular eukaryotic organisms, a group of specialised cells forms a tissue. A tissue is a group of cells working together to perform a specific function. Different tissues work together to form organs. and Different organs make up an organ system. For example, epithelial cells make up epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue, muscular tissue and glandular tissue all work together to form the stomach, which is an organ. The stomach makes up part of the digestive system, which is an organ system made up of the organs involved in digestion and absorption of food. So, in summary, what you need to know for this part of the specification, you need to know the structure and function of the cell, sur cell surface membrane, the nucleus, mitochondria, chloroplasts, Golgi apparatus and Golgi vesicles, lysosomes, ribosomes, rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, cell wall, cell vacuole. You also know, need to know that in complex multicellular organisms, eukaryotic cells have become specialised for specific functions and specialised cells are organised into tissues, tissues into organs and organs into systems. The students should be able to apply their knowledge of these features in explaining adaptations of eukaryotic cells. 
So we'll just quickly now do a worked exam question from the AQA. So here is a diagram of an animal cell. Name the organelles labelled B and C. So B is the Golgi body or a bit of Golgi apparatus. And C is the mitochondria. Name two structures present in plant cells that are not present in animal cells. So you could say either chloroplasts, cell wall, cell vacuole or starch grains.